Hi, this week's weekly ran up, which hasn't really been weekly for the past month. We're seeing a fair amount of retro kit, FPGAs and SBCs. Basically a whole lot of stuff that is really cool uh, that you really didn't know you needed. You know, one thing I don't like seeing in YouTube videos is a fake lead-in to a sponsored ad. An ad is an ad after all, and there's no point faking it. However, one company that doesn't fake it is JLC PCB. They provide a professional PCB manufacturing service with a quick turnaround of PCBs. You can get 10 PCBs for only $2 with a 24-hour turnaround time. And if you are a first time customer, click on the link below to get $20 off shipping on your first order. So how did that go? Really dad? First up on Kickstarter, there's yet another Sam D21 based breakout board. It's very similar to Adafruit's Feather breaking out all the same GPIOs. But this one can not only charge LiPos from the USB port, but from a 6 volt solar cell. If the microchip lineup of MCUs isn't powerful enough for you, then you can always make the switch to STMicro STM32s. The Super Nano is a campaign for yet another Arduino compatible breakout board, but using two different STM32 MCUs. The Super Nano Plus runs the Cortex M4 STM32 F401, and the Super Nano base model runs the STM32 F103. These MCUs are fairly similar to microchips SAM3 and SAM D51 series, but come in slightly cheaper. If you want to get into STM32s, then this looks pretty good. LiDAR is a technology that's been used by the military for decades, but it's always been pretty expensive for makers. The Hybo iLiDAR claims to provide a fully functioning LiDAR for only 99 US dollars. It uses a slightly different method of mapping by using a line laser and fisheye camera scanning in the vertical axis. It can map 3D data from 15 centimeters to 6 meters with a 180 degree field of view at up to 100 hertz and pull the data over USB, SPI or I2C. It's a very different approach to LiDAR and will be interesting to see how it goes in real world tests. The Allwise K2 is yet another wireless breakout board, but is based on the WISE protocol. WISE is a competitor to other low power wireless protocols such as LoRa, Sigfox and NBIIT. It's not a new technology as it's been around for more than a decade and claims to have better radio penetration and longer battery life, running off the old pager frequency. This board provides you everything to start using WISE with SAMD21 and GPIO headers. It's a little bit expensive, but if you want a 20 year battery life, might be the thing to use. The Pi Power Board is yet another power supply board for your Raspberry Pi, but this one has an onboard RTC, PWM fan and battery voltage monitoring, running off a 12 volt DC input. The serial box is something for your toolbox. It's a USB based DC buck boost converter, providing a 0 to 15 volt DC output at up to 600 milliamps. You can adjust both voltage and current limiting from a plain web interface, so no software installation required, but comes with some Python example scripts if you really want to code. Over at Indiegogo, they actually have something interesting this time. The Sipid Mayx, or however you say it, is a tiny SPC based on the 64-bit 800MHz Kendrite K210 SOC. This is a pretty interesting SOC that includes a neural network and audio processor supporting 8 mics at 192kHz, field programmable I.O. array, 8MB RAM and ROM. Pretty unusual chip. The board also has ST slot, SBI flash, RGB 888 LCD, DVP camera, USB Type-C for UART and power, and breaking out 48 GPIOs. The best thing, you can get all this for only $6 US from the Indiegogo campaign. So I have to apologise to all my subs. This is one that looks too cool to pass up. Back in weekly roundup number 49, we saw the Sam D21 based Tomu, which is a small device that fits within a USB port. Well now, they're back with an FPGA version. The Tomu FPGA uses the popular ICE40 FPGA, which has enough logic cells to implement a RISC-V CPU. So this is probably the smallest SBC around. 
You also get 2 megabyte flash, RGB LED and capacitive touch pads. Luke Valenti, the creator of the ever popular tiny FPGA is about to release the EX version. Designed around three different flavours of the Lattice ECP5 FPGA, the board also has 128 megabit SPI flash, 64 megabit hyperam, SD slot and USB Type-C connector. This is a step up from the previous BX and AX boards and will be interesting to see what people do with it. The Sense Temp is a PCB that has four MAX31865 RTD based temperature sensors. Designed to run off an Adafruit feather, it will provide a temperature reading accuracy of plus or minus 0.15 degrees Celsius from minus 50 to 260 degrees Celsius from four probes. The Wi-Fi Stepper is yet another stepper control board, but this one is, well, Wi-Fi based. Running an ESP8266 as well as an ATE CC508A crypto engine, access is of course over Wi-Fi, but you can also control it over UART and ITC. It can drive stepper motors up to 85 volts at 10 amps, with two different modes of operation giving you either 1 16th micro stepping with high hold torque or 1 over 128th micro stepping with low noise. It also offers power and motion profiles, thermal shutdown, under and over voltage and current limiting. Way back in weekly roundup number 25 we saw the Arju Shield on Tindy. Now there's the Arju Pi Shield up on pre-launch which combines both an Arduino Shield and Raspberry Pi header for breadboarding. It also has a socket for OLED display, ESP8266, silk screen labels and other features making it a pretty universal board. Sick and tired of badly supported graphics on SBCs, the Libra Risk 5 M Class SOC is looking to address that. It not only provides a low powered 64 bit quad core CPU running at 800 MHz, but a Kazon GPU core. The performance target for the GPU will be 1280 by 720 at 25 frames per second at 5 to 6 gigaflops, so not a hugely performing GPU. But the advantage is that it's all Libra licensed, so support should be much better than any commercial offering. This is one to watch. Project X is a series of boards in Pico ITX form factor, with a choice of three different all winner socks, the H2+, H3 and H5. All three boards also have EMMC, SPI flash bootloader, 12 volt DC supply and breaking out somewhat Pi compatible header gigabit ethernet, HDMI and USB ports. It also has an expansion header that provides other planned modules such as PoE and IO expansion. If you're wondering how much power your Arduino Nano is using, then the Po Meter Nano will be able to tell you. Powered from standard USB, it can measure from 0 to 500 milliamps at 0.1 milliamp resolution from USB and 0 to 4 amps from VIN at 0.5 milliamp resolution. Voltage measurements are from 0 to 24 volts at 10 millivolt resolution. You can see the current and voltage levels from the inbuilt OLED or via ITC. Another one for all those retro heads out there, the Maker Lisp machine has the EZ80 CPU running at a whopping 50 megahertz, as well as 256 kilobyte flash, 1 megabyte RAM, RTC, SD card, USB UART bridge, and an expansion header for VGA, keyboard, and other cool things planned. Looks pretty cool. For those people who thought the Amiga Onion was dead, they are actually still going. Here's a pre-launch for the Amiga 2 Pro. What makes this model the Pro? The Pro has increased memory to 8GB flash and 512MB RAM. And the board also has USB to serial bridge, USB host, LiPo charging button, LED and thankfully a proper 2.5mm spaced GPIO header. Finally they have gone and fixed all the power and connectivity issues that have plagued the original Amiga. There's been a lot of talk about the new Odroid H2, but you can finally pick one up from the hard kernel store for only 111 US dollars. What makes this SPC different is that it's really a PC in an SPC form factor. Not only does it run the quad core Intel Celeron J4105 at 2.3 GHz, but has dual channel DDR4 sodium RAM slots supporting up to 32 GB, M2 PCIe slot, 2 SATA 3.0, EMMC, USB 3.0, USB 2.0, dual gigabit ethernet, audio in-out, HDMI and DisplayPort, 
Both displays are capable of supporting 4K at 60Hz. You can power the board from 14 to 20 volts at 4 amps on a DC jack, so it requires a bit of juice, but heck, for that price, it's a pretty decent bang for your buck. So sorry to all those people, again, who have blown their budget because of this video. If you've been living under a rock for the last month, or if you've been really busy like I have been, then you may have missed possibly the last Raspberry Pi to have a minor update. Maybe. The Raspberry Pi 3 A Plus returns to the original Pi's form factor, but maintains the same SOC, the BCM2837B0. This new model keeps the SD slot, HDMI, MIPI, CSI, DSI, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, really everything is kept except memory is reduced to 512 megabytes. The gigabit ethernet is removed and you only have one USB port. Word on the street is that they also improved thermal management and USB mass storage booting. Over at Orange Pi Land, they have departed slightly from releasing yet another SPC and instead come out with a neural network compute stick for facial and voice recognition. The Orange Pi A Stick 2801, great name, runs an SPR2801S Light Spur processor. Who the heck came up with that name? Light Spur? Light Spur? Light Spur? Anyway, it's a pretty grunty processor. The stick also has eMMC, USB 3.0 and draws 300 milliamps, which is pretty decent. Note that this is for the hardware only. The SDK and training tool will cost more, of course. The Orange Pi guys have also finally released an official Linux image for its 3G IoT SPC. Took them a while, but obviously they were busy doing other things. So now you don't have to just rely on Android. If you're into clustering, then Mininodes has just released a carry board that can run five Pi 3 compute modules. It powers all the modules from a DC jack and also has a gigabit ethernet switch and RJ45 socket for network. It's pretty expensive at 260 US dollars, but it's the only five socket carrier board that I've seen so far. Over at Rack Wireless, they've released a LoRa-based GPS tracker called Wistrio. Yet another great name. Not only does it use the Rack 5205 LoRa module, but an STM32, Quectel L76 supporting GPS, accelerometer and environmental sensors. LiPo battery charging, 30 pin GPIO header, and a full LoRaWAN stack. For $50 US, it's a fairly complete unit for things like vehicle tracking. Over at Hackaday, they pointed at a 25 cent micro, which is the CH554. The cool thing about this part is that there's a lot of effort getting open source development tools going for it. There's currently a port running on Windows and Linux, and it seems to be fairly well featured so far, with a few bits missing. SpiderSOM is a SOM based board that runs the Intel Max 10 FPGA. This is a pretty interesting board that also has up to 512MB DDR3 RAM, 4MB SPI flash, 4GB eMMC, RTC, PMIC and LiPo charging. You, can also, you also get a 230 pin edge connector with 178 GPIOs, supporting 13 LVDS transmitters and 54 receivers. If you want to be able to access all those GPIOs, then you can get the carrier board, which breaks out a USB port, four PMOD connectors, Arduino headers, JTAG, a few buttons to mash, and prototyping area. This is a pretty grunty little FPGA board. Not to be left in the dark, Microchip have just recently announced a new MCU, aimed at wireless networks. The new SAM R34 and R35 series has the same SAM D25 core with all its GPIOs, but also beefs up the flash to 256 kilobytes and adds in a LoRa module with a full LoRaWAN stack. It's considerably smaller than the existing RN2903 module, but also capable of supporting multiple regions. So it's a design once, support many thing, which reduces overall cost of products, which is nice to see. Over at my favourite store, Tindy, there's a bunch of really cool things. You can pick up a TLC5947 breakout board, which is a constant current LED driver, providing 12-bit PWM control over 24 LED channels. It uses an almost similar SPI interface, enough for it not to be a problem, but are daisy chainable, so you can theoretically chain as many as you want. The MCP25625 is a pretty decent CAN bus transceiver. This one has two of them on board, as well as an Arduino mini header, screw terminals and regulator. 
good for being able to send and transmit at the same time. SushiBits Duplex Mini 2 is another FPGA board. This one has the not so common Micro Semi Pro ASIC 3 FPGA, as well as an STM32 F103, 512KB RAM, 16MB SPI flash, and Arduino headers. A pretty decent board using a not so common FPGA. CPLDs are fairly similar to FPGAs, but they are miles apart in terms of functionality. As opposed to FPGAs, they usually have an internal flash, start immediately, and their logic functions don't rely on lookup tables. Oh, and they are also generally cheaper than FPGAs. Here's a board based on an Altera 5M570 CPLD in a handy Arduino form factor. It has 24 GPIOs with 4 channel ADC capable of 300 kilo samples per second, USB to UART bridge, and a few buttons to mash. If you have a few boards to program, then here's a handy pogo pin programmer with 1.27mm pitch pogo pins and several headers supporting various programmers. Ever since the RC2014 meetup the other week, I've been impressed at how far the retro scene has come. Here's an Altair 8800 computer system. A little expensive, but a heck of a lot of work has been put into it, so well justified. Runs 512 kilobyte RAM and stores software on micro SD as simulated floppy and hard disk storage. If you're struggling to find space for that GPS antenna, then a good solution is to use a spiral log antenna. These sorts of antennas have been used by the military for years as a way of reducing antenna bulk. If you face the antenna one way, it becomes left hand polarized. Face it the other way and it is right hand polarized. If you haven't the foggiest idea what I just said, then check out my website for links to some explanations. Or else, in summary, if you want to increase GPS reception without a bulky antenna, then get one of these. As always, check my website for links to all this cool stuff that will blow your budget. And if you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to hit like. And if you haven't already subscribed, it would be great to have you around. Also, if you have a little bit left over from all that spending, you can support me further by joining the fabulous group of patrons I have over at Patreon. So thanks for watching and see you next week. Was that all right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no. Is that what I'm saying, oh, my lantern? Yeah, you can say lantern if you want to. <laughs> so how'd that go? Okay. How was that? Oh gosh golly. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like I'm like saying gobble gobble gobble. Go. So how'd that go? Oh my lanta. <laughs> my lanta. <laughs> Is that how you say it? Yeah. I think. I don't know what lanta it was. My lanta. That's what it's. <laughs> okay. <laughs>